You fools! You'll die in there. The serpent's curse. The only way is to charm the beast with the serpent's eye. Only way! Serpent's eye! Scorpio! What about the serpent's curse? Slane. Mother was right, Scorpio! We're rich! Rich! Right? Oh no! Right? Oh God, no! To you. Sorry, honey. Right up there. Well, the Crowleys have just bailed on the scene, and the Sargassons this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Who's left? Just your friend Myron. Oh, Myron's a great guy. Myron is 48 and he still lives with his mother. Honestly, I'd never have left my job as a police officer and married you if I thought I was going to turn into a social vegetable. You know whose fault that is, don't you? No, whose? Yours. If you'd only write... Westerns, or romances, or I don't know. Science fiction. No. Oh. Anything but that, and horror and fantasy. Well, then maybe people might want to know us a bit better. I don't understand, honey. I've got to write, and I've got to write horror. To let it all out, I just have to... I'm sorry, honey. Listen, I'll find my agent on Monday morning. How does the title Texas Outlaws sound? All oh, right. I do love you. What'll it be, Ryder, old chum? An innocent woman, walled up alive by a jealous husband. A musical box that plays the last tune you'll ever hear. A vampire king who falls in love with a common and scratched. A blackmailing secretary, fed slice by tender slice. To a paper shredding machine. A blind old man who befriends the devil himself. Pick a tail, right? They're all in there. And they've got to find a way out. Oh, you know. I don't have to tell you. Months pass, and Ryder works and works. But his heart isn't in it. His heart's not on the open range or the tall grass plains, but in the cold cellars and the dark and deserted creaking attics. And oh, how his heart longs for them. How his fingers itch to write. But you know, Texas Outlaws is a bestseller. So much so, that his publishers have demanded a sequel. So it looks like being a long time before he gets to write another slash-filled shocker. Poor writers, getting edgier and edgier. And Myrtle? Well, Myrtle hasn't noticed Ryder's change in mood. Not with all the parties and functions she's suddenly being invited to. To apologise, I was a uh, wool gathering. Your book, please? Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, thank you. Very different from your earlier works. 
so much less, um... Yes? Less, um... Less what? Drenched in gore. Oh. Who is the rapes? Oh, yes. Quite shocking and graphic. Beautifully written, but, uh... I can't help but feel that perhaps you were, um... Holding back? We all have to grow out of that sort of thing sometimes. Do you know, that sounds very much like someone else talking, Mr. Burr. Are there to be no more tales written in blood? Please, say it isn't so. No. No more horror writing for Ryder Burt. something in his heart, and he couldn't say what. Since his orphan days, old man Tyler had taught him to be a man and well, but nothing else. And here was a problem that couldn't be shot, or fought, or raped. Like a death rattle, he came through the window, the shattering of a soul. Suddenly, a knife could no longer a knife across his pained and aged face. The room reeled around, too many hours, too many a metronome marking the signal. What I write. Does it really matter? Yes, Ryder, it does. Because it matters to my friends. Maybe that makes me shallow, but. Are they really your friends? Well, I want them to be. If. If I didn't. I mean, if I didn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't, would you? you Ryder, I married you because I love you. I love you, honey. I love you too, sweetheart. <laughs> Nobody told me that love would be the highest, dirtiest fight of all. Meanwhile, Life for Myrtle is one long round of functions and dinner parties. There's the Sandersons, the Crowleys, and Myron, of course. But you can't have everything.